This is file 231069FY, People versus Jessica Lorraine Goebel. That's you? Yes, sir. And I met you before at the time of your plea. You're here with your lawyer, Mr. John Bush. Also present is prosecuting attorney David Marvin and uh, probation agent uh, who we've discussed this uh, earlier this morning, Mr. Matt Huff. And uh, Wednesday one. This is a difficult case to know what to do. And uh, I read the pre-sentence and uh, Mr. Huff spent a lot of time and effort on this. And uh, he is in the same dilemma I did, but let's start at the beginning. It's alleged that on or about April 30th that you received and concealed a large amount of stolen property that belonged to Trinity Atkinson, including a washer, dryer, couch, bed frame, mattress, side tables, coffee maker, toaster, a whole bunch of stuff worth more than $1,000, but less than $20,000. So it was charged as a felony offense, uh, punishable by up to five years imprisonment and up to $10,000. Are you Tiffany McKenzie? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Bush, your other client is, or Mr. George, your client is here if you wanna to talk to her. At any rate, uh, that was the charge. It was reduced to a misdemeanor at the time of the pre-exam conference to a charge called um, embezzlement over 100, but less than 1,000, which is a misdemeanor, which is a misdemeanor, which is a misdemeanor, which is a misdemeanor which is a misdemeanor, which is a misdemeanor, which is a misdemeanor. Your Honor, I show R and C 200 to 1,000. You said embezzlement. Yeah, uh, arist mis I, I, Mr. Marvin's correct. Yeah, okay. it's R and C, uh, receiving concealing, as opposed to larceny. Yes, you are correct. I'm looking for my other note here. You represented at that time that restitution was in the amount of, I wrote from 7,000 to 9,668.85, defendant disputes restitution. She pled no contest, which I always am disappointed in, especially in larceny cases, because the people don't really admit, they just allow or accept that a conviction will enter. Um, so in Matt's pre-sentence, um, he addresses some of this. We'll get to that. So we've got a misdemeanor plea to a, an offense punishable by up to a year in jail. Defendant is presently a resident in a recovery program. I think it's closer to house arrest than uh, I don't think she can walk away from it in Indiana. She's here. The complainant is here. Uh, there's a considerable dispute as to the amount uh, due. Mr. Bush, what would you like me to know? Well, first of all, I, I thought that Mr. Huff went above and beyond the, the call of duty on, on the report. It's, I think equivalent almost to a felony pre-sentence investigation. He, he really looked at all of the uh, the angles, the background, the history. Miss Goble, first thing I, I do is the eye test. And she looks good. Um, the, we can tell when people are struggling with particular drugs and methamphetamine, just their behavior and how they look. And I had one just a little while ago. For lack of a better term, she passes the eye test today. Uh, the, the plan is to stay for nine to 10 months in Serenity House, and then probably she'll stay beyond that because she will be under a two-year house arrest in the state of Indiana. 
currently that starts on September 7th of 2023. Uh, she's here with the, the founder of Serenity House today, Mr. Martin. He brought her here. Uh, all of her Indiana cases have been resolved. As part of being at Serenity House, she's working. Uh, she'll have the opportunity to make excess money to pay restitution. She works for SCP Limited. Uh, they make igniters for, for apparently for propane or gas powered heating units. She's had that job for two months. She's working approximately 50 hours per week. She also does services at Bowen Center in Auburn, and she's involved in daily AA programs, and she has a sponsor. I would ask the court to implement the recommendation. Uh, restitution is going to be the critical issue. Uh, she'll have a lot of deferred jail hold hanging over her head if, if she runs a foul law. Thank you. Mr. Marvin, what's your position? He talks about the passing the eye test, but I think a lot of thieves do. And we're dealing with a thief here until history changes. We have now five in a row. The only reason this isn't a felony is because I don't want the taxpayers to get ripped off even more, knowing that a conviction at least would get some restitution for the victim. And that's what I'm after. She needs to go to jail. Uh, I don't know what goes on in Indiana, but um, maybe if there were incarceration down there, she'd take it seriously. Um, things don't add up and you're dealing with a thief. You've got a camera cord that was cut. So the surveillance was cut. You've got a bolt cutter to break into a storage unit. And you've got somebody who spent a lot of years collecting things and trying to put a life together. And she's young. I think she told me she's only 23 years old and it's pretty sad. This also might be a lesson um, for her though in insurance, why it's so important to have insurance because thieves steal from you. And there's sometimes you can't do much about it. The restitution we'll get into, um, we're asking for the full amount. Um, we've got some receipts to prove at least a great, great portion of it, though. But don't let the visual test fool you, Your Honor. She needs to go to jail. All right. This is a no contest plea, but Ms. Goble, you have an opportunity to say anything if you wish. Anything you wish to say? Um. I know that my history looks bad and I know that I've done a lot of things in the past. Um, I was given an opportunity to change my life. Um, I was in court one day and Ben Martin, the founder of the Trinity House, he walked in and he came up to me and asked me if I wanted help, if I wanted to change. And he gave me his phone number and I took his phone number and I came back to Sturgis after that court date. And two days later, I called him. And I told him that I was ready to change. I wanted, I've never had an opportunity to get out of the drug life before. I was, I, I don't have family around. I don't have anything. And when he gave me that opportunity, I jumped on it and I called him. He came and picked me up that same day and he drove me to the Serenity house. And I've been there every, every day since then. Um, I'm 73 days clean. I do do AA. My life is changing immensely. Um, I have a three-year-old little boy and I'm fighting to get custody back from him for him. And I see him twice a week. He comes and he sees me at the Serenity House. He has a lifeline lady that brings him. Um, I don't know how to explain it. But I know that this is, I know that I will never touch a drug again. I know this isn't about a drug case, it's a theft charge. But I think we all know that theft and drugs come hand in hand. Yes. And I'm just asking for an opportunity to be able to continue my, my time at the Serenity House and to continue staying clean. My life has changed. I feel like a new person. I know that doesn't bring her things back. I know that doesn't change anything that happened, but I'm willing to make it right with her do anything to make her feel like things have been satisfied in her eyes. All right, we are 73 days clean as a good start. 
One thing I didn't hear is I'm sorry. And as I said, I don't really like no contest, please. This was clearly felony territory. We're talking between four and $10,000 worth of restitution. The pre-sentence report And this is a paper, it's written. Under the part that says opinion, third paragraph. She presents as open and honest as the first line of the opinion, but Ms. Goble holds to the fact that she did know that she was in possession of stolen property. It's supposed to say Ms. Goble holds to the fact that she did not know that she was in possession of stolen property. Um, Somebody cut the camera feed, cut the lock off this, and stole stuff that can't be replaced. Her husband was deployed in the Marine Corps, and they used, someone stole all of his clothes, um, his uniforms, their furniture, their washer, dryer, personal items all stolen and then you post it for sale on marketplace and she sees her stolen couch on there and confronts you and the other guy don't know nothing about nothing So when the thing is broken into, there were no tire impressions of any value. It did not appear anything was left at the scene from the suspects. There is one camera at the entrance of the facility. The camera was located on the east side to the rear. That wire was cut. I did not observe that any other units had been broken into. We asked the owners, the Hamiltons, uh, if, if they had been having any issues. They said they'd been having an issue with Jessica Goebel trespassing on their property. She is said to be either walking or driving a red SUV with no registration plate. So before they even saw this on Marketplace, you were already the numero uno suspect. Uh, but you don't know that this stuff is stolen. Um, they want uh, 9,000 restitution. And Matt and I discussed this. So what do I do? You're working. You're going to be working. Um, you're in uh, this facility. You had a bit of a crime wave, possession of methamphetamine, auto theft, auto theft, and theft. And you're right, theft and methamphetamine sort of go hand in hand. So you had a rough 2022. But then in April of 23, you have been on bond. Um, no, this occurred in December of 22. So you were out on bond on those charges at the time this went down. So Mr. Marvin says, well, great, you're in rehab, but you're a thief and um, 
he wants punishment, uh, which would certainly interrupt the treatment protocol that you're on. Are you willing to accept their restitution figure? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Huff, you anything to add? Um, very briefly, the, the two points I was going to speak to were on the um, the recommendation. The reason I, I my initial tendency was was in hand in hand with what Mr. Marvin said. The only reason that I that I um, went down from from that jail is that I do feel like um, enforcing a long period of jail in this circumstance is going to hurt the victim more than it's going to hurt the defendant. Um, because that is a, such a substantial restitution, she's gainfully employed now. If she left today signing up for a payment plan, there's hope that the victim could end up getting some of that restitution back. And then the, the final thing that I would just speak to is obviously, um, from my perspective, not being an attorney, the uh, restitution was a little bit murky as far as what could be requested. I would recommend that whatever the maximum restitution that is is able to be granted would be granted to the Atkinsons. Well, Mr. Marvin was pretty upfront about it. He said at the time of the plea agreement that that was it. So There are different sentencing goals, um, protection of society being foremost, reformation of the offender, punishment. This is a punishment. Or 9,668 to Trinity Atkinson, 85 cents. Mr. Marvin, as far as I know, nobody else has been charged with anything related to this. Correct. So I don't think she did this by herself. Her version is that she bought it from somebody or which is why it's receiving concealing as opposed to larceny. I don't know what happened, but the fine is zero. There's a $75 crime victims rights fee and a $50 state minimum fee. <clears throat> She has one day of jail credit. I'm going to order 101 days in jail credit one, leaving 100 days to serve in the St. Joseph County Jail. You can resume your treatment protocol after that, but you're being punished for stealing all this lady's property, including your husband's military uniform and six years worth of clothing. You did agree to the restitution amount, which I commend, but you never one time said, I'm sorry, and uh, nobody else is going to be liable for this. So let's add that up. And as Matt said, the likelihood of recovering on this is not great. When she gets out of jail, we can set up a payment plan. All right, you're going to go, you'll get good time credited to this, but you're going to be 100 days before you go back to Serenity House. All right, Mr. Weller did appear, did he? I, I haven't went back, you know. No, he's not. 